You're listening to the Real Life AI Podcast, the show that invites leading industry and academia experts to dig into the real life applications of artificial intelligence. Your host of the podcast is Tigran Petrosian, the co founder and CEO of Super Annotate, which is an end to end platform to build and manage training data, known as the backbone of AI. The guest of this episode is Christopher Hopper, the co founder and CEO of Aurora Solar. He shares the story behind building a company that has hit a $4 billion valuation. From the very first accomplishments to the expansion of the company through machine learning applications, Christopher unveils how Aurora Solar designed a better way to install solar panels with a vision for a more sustainable future. With no further ado, let's tune in and find out more. Hello, everyone. I'm very excited to welcome you to our next episode of the Real Life AI podcast series. I'm your host, Tigran Petrosian. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Super Annotate. We're building an end-to-end -end data infrastructure for various machine learning applications. I'm also very particularly excited to have Chris, uh, the co-founder and CEO at Aurora Solar. As its name may suggest, Aurora Solar is a solar industry software, and it's making the solar installation process very quick and easy. Of course, Chris will tell more about this. The company has already raised over half a billion dollars. Hey, Chris, great to have you. Uh, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Tigran. Excited for this conversation. Can you share more about what's your story, how you ended up uh, founding Aurora Solar? Yeah, happy to. Uh, we started Aurora... Uh, almost 10 years ago at this point, 2013, uh, my co-founder Sam and I, we met in, in business school um, <clears throat> at Stanford and we became friends early on in the program. And as we're talking about what, you know, what might we do after school, uh, where our interests lie, um, I shared some of my, my background with Sam, which was the off-grid electrification space. So I did, spent a couple of years trying to figure out how do we sustainably electrify off-grid communities in developing countries. And out of that you know, discussion came the idea of starting actually a larger scale solar installation business, again, focused on emerging markets. So building, you know, medium sized um, residential and commercial um, solar installations, in particular in East Africa. And so to show that we can do that, we decided to uh, put together pilot projects. So during nights and weekends, we would meet in the library and dorm rooms and design a system. We found suppliers, we raised a loan, we put the whole thing together and then ultimately we flew uh, flew to Kenya and installed the system so that was back in 2012 um, while we were still in school wow. and then what started happening is that other people started reaching out to us and asked us hey does solar make sense for me for my home for my business because they saw that you know the system worked it would have math you know happened um, the, the school had no more power cuts they saved on a bill every month and so we got a lot of, a lot of inbound interest um, and the question was always the same, like, what, what can solar do for me? Does it make for me, sense for me to go solar? And our, our answer was, well, we don't know. It, it depends, right? Every system is different. Every building has a different roof structure, different environment, different uh, energy consumption profile. Um, and so what ends up happening is that you, you design, uh, um, uh, uh, go through the design process anew every, every time. Um, and, and that's how we realized that to, to scale this as a business, we really needed um, software to, to streamline the, the process of going solar. And then we looked into all the, the details, the market and, and so forth. And we saw, whoa, there's, there's actually a lot of costs associated with going with the process of going solar. In fact, in the US, more than half the cost of a solar installation is, is not the equipment. It's, it's the soft costs that sit on top. Mm -hmm. And so it became clear to us to take solar to where it needed to go. Um, we, you know, there needed to be a software platform to power this transition to, to a future that's in large part powered by, by solar energy. Amazing. Uh, if you remember this early years, what do you think was the most, uh, difficult part of the building, basically the MVP, the early product? The product was, I mean, what we do, there's a lot of deep technology. So, um, and that's actually one thing that differentiates us in, in our market is that we we take a pretty rigorous approach to everything we do. So we just a, a series of engines, if you will, that um, that do different things. We have a simulation engine. We have a, a that simulates the energy production of a system. We have a ray tracing engine that uh, calculates um, how much sun, uh, which part of the, uh, the 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 roof of the system receives, 
Um, we have an optimization engine that designs optimal solar installation. We have, a, of course, machine learning engine as well. Um, and so we have sort of this sequence of engines, each one of them was, was significant development effort. So I guess that was that was a challenge mm -hmm. initially was to, um, well, it obviously it takes a lot of a lot of work to put all that together. And also it requires a lot of people with very specialized knowledge. So also building the team that can that can build that. Um, that was a, that was also um, one of the early challenges. Although <clears throat> to be fair, we actually had a um, maybe an easier time with it because we had a we have a great mission that that appeals to mm -hmm. people. So we found really talented folks um, uh, wanted to join us and, and and help make this this future that's powered by solar become a, a reality. Yeah, really really amazing. How long did it take usually to really build that? Because I can imagine building that sophisticated system. It's not like some uh, many software products, building an MVP and testing maybe takes uh, easy, very quick. But in your case, it sounds pretty sophisticated. Mm. <laughs> so in a, in a way, 10 years. Um, but uh, we know, I mean, the first version, probably a year and a half, um, something like that. Constant iteration and you get feedback feedback from the user and you, you add features and, and repeat. Do you remember the time when you felt like, oh my God, it's working. It's going to scale. There's nothing like this in the world. Yeah. You know, there were sort of multiple of those in a way. Um, mm -hmm. the first one was when we, we received the first check for a first payment for a software. And uh, that was a big thing. It was just a going from, okay, we're, we're putting together this, this cool project to someone is willing to pay us for this was, was pretty amazing. It was only $159. <laughs> uh, we still have, it was a physical check. We had no bill, billing system. So we literally got a check in the mail. I walked to, walked to Chase Bank down the street and I cashed it. <laughs> like, first, first revenue. So that was, that was huge. Um, not because the amount, but the, the, what it meant. Um, and then the second was actually when we hit 1 million in ARR, um, which was probably a year after we launched a product or so. Mm -hmm. um, and that was uh, that was pretty amazing too. You know, the million dollars, uh, you know, mm -hmm. is a is a, a uh, certainly was was a large number for what I was, yeah, used to. And so the fact that you know people are paying us that sort of money um, was was quite special. Also, to note maybe in tying it back to to your question around challenges, um, early days fundraising wasn't wasn't that easy for us. Now we've we've raised a lot of money, but back in 2013, you know, it was a very different environment. Not necessarily in terms of the the, the macro, but solar in particular was not a not a very hot space, and so we ended up bootstrapping for for five years, and so revenue revenue was particularly significant. Wow, bootstrapping for five years, the keeping the team together. I guess you really need that strong mission and vision. Everyone super driven during that time to really have that belief that it's going to make it work, right? Yeah, it was that. Also, we could see it working, right? So the the product was working. The you know customers love the product. We can see one key metric we track is how many solar projects um, we touch in our software, and, and that number just kept kept going up and up and up. We, we had a lot of indication that things were working and, and the mission that we all all believe in. Awesome. I I know that you've started using computer vision to further uh, optimize your processes. Can you share more? about how this idea came and what is that about, how it helps to further improve your processes? Uh, well, solar design process has these, our software has these engines that um, do different parts of the design process. If you can think of the process of, of getting to an optimal solar installation, there's, there's multiple steps, right? There's first understanding the energy consumption of the buildings. How much, what's the utility bill? How much do you pay before you go solar? which you can never reduce because you now start producing your own energy with, with solar. Um, so how much energy do you consume uh, during what times of the day do you consume energy because of how utility rates work? So that's, that's one step. Second step is understanding the environment. So what's the roof like? Um, are there neighboring buildings, mountain ranges, trees, casting shade? What's the weather like? That's uh, mm -hmm. step two. Step three, the system design. So configuring how many panels fit, where to put them, uh, and so forth. Step four, what's the energy production going to be like based on what you put together? Step five, what are the savings like? And then step six, if you finance a system, you know, after everything's said and done, how much do you save on your, 
on your system or on your, on your, on your bill every every month. But if you think about it, sort of this sequence of, of steps, we started uh, working on optimizing, uh, sorry, automating each, uh, as many as possible, each one of them sort of at a time. The big one that was outstanding, that was really difficult to, to solve is the step of creating a 3D representation of the building. So we have our own CAD engine, if you will. You can 3D model your roof. Um, that's one of our uh, where well, product really shines, um, but it was a manual process, and so we were trying to figure out how do we how do we automate that part? That's a necessary part because you know residential solar goes on roofs. There's you know 100 plus million roofs. How do we design solar at scale? How do we you know ideally you know the dream is can I just snap my finger and design an optimal solar installation for every every roof in the U.S. or even in the world, right? That was sort of the in the limit that the, the vision we wanted to get to uh, to be able to do that, and the necessary part there was to to automate the the roof modeling, um, the creating a three D three D model of, of the building. Six years ago, probably we started our first um, first, first efforts um, um, in in computer vision. Perfect. So I'm wondering, it takes quite some time until you have from idea to uh, some working product around uh, machine learning. Can you share how much, how long time it took from the first idea until you realized that, okay, this AI uh, application, AI installation to your system is working? Because according to many estimates, over 80% of uh, ML projects fail. And when is the right time you realize, okay, it's working, it's not working, or what it took you to get it working? It took a while. It took several years till we had something. And um, one, one thing was also the state of the art had shifted so much. You know, when we started, our initial approaches were still very much based on uh, sort of traditional computer vision rather than machine learning. Then, you know, all these advances started rolling in. You know, we shifted our approach towards you know machine learning based based approach. We were sort of at the well catching up to, and then at the cutting edge of of what what is happening, uh, which was very very exciting. Um, but it it took quite a while. Um, the other thing is, you know, it, it's not the challenge whether is it working because something what was always working. The question is sort of what are, how do you map that to the needs of the needs of the market? So what are the use cases, and how do you meet that that threshold? It's a bit of a blurry, uh, blurry thing, and especially as we're sort of bumping against the state of the art, and, and um, to our knowledge, nobody has has, the, has done what we've done and has the same. You know, there's not a textbook solution for it. That was a, it was a bit of uncertainty, I guess, and uh, you, you're wading into and faith you have to have. Um, so it took us it took us a couple of years, um, but it's something we also we also knew and a risk we were willing to to take. Um, to be fair, it wasn't the, the core of our business, right? We had a working business that was there. This was sort of the next generation and something where we believed that we believed in, where we could take that, that technology and, you know, bring machine learning to uh, renewables, to, to clean tech. Uh, we thought this, this would be an amazing, amazing thing that's super impactful if we, if we could make it work. Recently, it's been terribly exciting because when, when, when you see it come together, it's, it's, I mean, it's magic, right? Uh, you hit a button and everything happens, you know, and now it's even, on many dimensions outperforming humans, right? Um, that's wow. uh, the, the bar for human is, is also not perfection, right? Humans are need to be trained and uh, make errors and mistakes. And, and mm -hmm. so to be able to, you know, augment them and then, you know, uh, and give, give humans that sort of leverage is, is pretty powerful. This is such a great example of how uh, machine learning projects uh, work generally it takes time, energy and commitment for a long time. And if you spend uh, some time, let's say uh, half a year or a year, or at some point, it's so easy to give up because it requires so much data, it requires so much iteration, so much building, uh, iterating, understanding what works, what doesn't work. And this is a, such a great example of the persistence that when you have a goal, and then you're persistent, iterating well, it, 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 it will work out, especially in data science and computer vision projects. And this is what we're trying to push for for every our client who's building machine learning. And of course, help help that to be successful yeah. from our side. Such a great story there. So it was definitely something that's risky, but we, we can see the, the payoff on the other side being a huge game changer. So absolutely, that's, uh, that helped us uh, persevere. Absolutely. 
if I switch the gears a little bit, you have raised uh, so much uh, great fundraising rounds over half billion across uh, several times uh, into your development. I think the last one was 200, 250 million within a short period of time in a row. Uh, what's next for Aurora Solar? How are you utilizing these funds to bring up Aurora Solar to the next level? Our mission is to create a, um, a a world that's powered by solar energy. To make it so that you know everyone can benefit from, benefit from clean renewable energy. Yeah, that's what we get out of bed every day. Now, the way how we do that is by uh, streamlining the process of of going solar to bring down the cost of of solar to the to the end consumer, and to make it easier to design these systems at scale. That's always uh, it's been what what this has been about. Increasingly, what we're doing, though, is we're also touching more and more of the process of going solar. So we started with a design solution. You can think of it a little bit like, it's not perfect, but AutoCAD for solar, maybe. Um, and then we expanded from there. So now we have sales tools. Uh, we have a machine learning-based product called Lead Capture AI that lets uh, homeowners self-qualify, basically designs a system for them interactively, it's building more tools, toolkit, if you will, for, for solar professionals. Also, there's a there's a big world out out there outside the U.S. So we're also turning eyes to that. So that's going to be an exciting uh, new chapter for us as well. Perfect. Uh, is there already public number how many houses or homes have been installed with solar panel through your system? Uh, we don't track uh, installed per se, but we for us the metric is designed because we mm -hmm. also used early in the funnel for evaluation and quoting. Uh, but uh, more than 10 million buildings have been designed in in Aurora. So it's a huge, uh, huge milestone for us and incredible to see that number go up every every day, really, every week and every day. Wow, that's so exciting. I can't uh, wait to see what's next for Aurora Solar and for you guys. I'm such a big fan and especially from us seeing every day, every uh, industry technology is starting to adapt new AI applications, new processes around AI. Uh, surprisingly, you know, there are industries that I would never think uh, machine learning is coming and seeing the solar industries also being implemented with machine learning applications. Of course, that's added even further fascination for me. So I want to wish all the best luck for you and Aurora Solar. All the best for the listeners. Just want to remind our guest today is Chris. Chris is the co-founder and CEO of Aurora Solar. They're building the future of uh, solar energy software to make it much easier and quicker and more understandable uh, where to install solar, how much savings you'll get, what it will take, and so on. So really excited to have you uh, with me, Chris, today. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me, Tigran.